Hi everyone, welcome back. This is chapter 10 of the workbook and these are the solutions to the questions that I posed. So I first asked you to fill in the gaps and the reason I did this is because I really want you to master um, the difference between the disease, the causative pathogen and the mode of transmission. And the one I want you to pay particular attention to would be, um, let me just find a pen here, I'm just going to use a blue pen, would be malaria. Okay. So a lot of the time, students are able to understand, yeah, the disease cholera is caused by vibrio cholera and um, the mode of transmission is if you have contaminated food and water and or water rather um, and HIV, a lot of people get that. But when it comes to malaria, um, people tend to think that the causative pathogen for malaria is the female Anopheles mosquito. No, the mosquito is the mode of transmission. The causative pathogen itself is Plasmodium falciparium. Um, and if you just write past Plasmodium, you would also be fine. So just take note of that and also just bear in mind how um, these different diseases are transmitted. So the, then we go on to the next part because a lot of the discussion around um, infectious diseases, especially those of you who bought the workbook, you already know that it's not just a workbook that has questions and there, there are also a couple of tips that I've put in there to help you prepare for the exams and to sort of give you an idea of what you might expect with regards to certain chapters. So you know that with regards to infectious diseases, it's not just about knowing the disease or the particularities of it in terms of transmission and things like that. There are certain types of questions that you might be asked and I've sort of explained that to you in the workbook. Um, so yeah, here then I ask you, what are some mechanisms through which antibiotics affect bacteria? So you know that they prevent cell membrane synthesis or growth, um, which is what penicillin does to bacteria, actually. Um, they prevent the synthesis of RNA and essential proteins. They block enzyme action. They can prevent, um, they can block DNA synthesis. And I see that I've repeated protein synthesis here, so I don't know why I did that. Um, how does penicillin in particular affect bacteria? So penicillin is an interesting one because what it does is it prevents the growth of bacterial cells by interrupting the formation of the bacterial cell wall. So you know that bacterial cell walls are made of peptidoglycan and peptidoglycan has what we call crosslinks. So when bacteria want to grow, they will inject um, or release autolysins into their cell walls. And what those autolysins will do is basically make little holes in the cell walls that loosen the cell wall a little bit. Now, as the cell wall loosens, the bacteria is then trying to form crosslinks that will fill in those gaps. But that doesn't happen if it's in the presence of penicillin, because what penicillin will do is that it will prevent those crosslinks from being formed by inhibiting the enzymes to synthesize the cross things. So the bacteria just realizes, oh, wait a minute, it's feeling a little bit wobbly in here. I'm not feeling as firm and as toned as I should be. And because the cell wall of bacteria is loose and bacteria live in watery environment, it means that water will flow into the bacteria. And after a while, the bacteria will not be able to withstand the pressure of the water that's coming in and it will burst and it will die. And that's when the phagocytic cells will just come in and mop it up. And that's it, like to those goodbye. So the last two questions which I have to turn were like, why are antibiotics ineffective against viruses? Um, and I often say this to students that they should remember that antibiotics are designed to combat bacterial infections and not viral infections. So if you have the flu, you are not supposed to go and get an antibiotic, except you have a bacterial infection alongside the flu. Um, so perhaps you have a streptococcus infection that's affecting your throat, then it would be like, oh, okay, then it makes sense for you to get an antibiotic for that. But the flu is caused by virus, so an antibiotic does not address it. Okay. Um, and just to answer the question more directly, viruses are not they're not cellular organisms. They are biological organisms, but they don't have cells. Rather, what they have is a protective coating and some DNA and RNA. And sometimes um, antibiotics, are, well, not sometimes, antibiotics are unable to penetrate that um, capsid, that protein coating that they have. And so it makes it difficult for them to, or rather impossible for them to combat viruses. Um, and this is a question I didn't write out because it's more like a, question you get asked in the exam where they're trying to test your application of biology to society. So like what happens if we um, have a lot of antibiotic resistance? Obviously it means that it would be difficult to treat diseases um, and um, that means that more diseases will be 
would be fatal, like because antibiotics, um, rather pathogens would become aware of how antibiotics function and they would have developed um, all kinds of mechanisms to combat it. So um, that's the point of this question. And how can you address it? Obviously, those are things like reducing the amount of antibiotics that we take, only taking antibiotics on prescription, taking antibiotics and completing the course. So some people would take an antibiotic um, for three days and then they would say, oh, um, I feel better, even though they're supposed to take it for five days. So by three days, they're like, oh, I feel better, so I don't need to take it anymore. But the reality is that when you don't take the complete course of the antibiotics, you will have a remnant of that bacteria who perhaps have not been destroyed yet, thinking to themselves, oh, so this is how this works. And then they develop a gene or something that enables them to combat that antibiotic in future. So if you get sick with the same disease in future and you take in the antibiotic, it's unlikely to work because now they know how it works and they've been able to develop a mechanism to combat it. So that is it for chapter 10 and I hope that you have found this helpful. Next chapter is chapter 11 and that is the last one and it will follow very shortly.